Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we have another one of those Sonoff switches to have a look at. And this one's actually been sent in by Stuart. And uh, this one is the 16 amp version, so quite a bit more capable than the 10 amp version we looked at uh, a while ago. Now, this is supposed to be a fairly similar device, but uh, whether it's similar inside is another matter, so uh, let's open it up and see what's inside. So here's the uh, 16 amp version, and so Stuart sent this one in. And this one, uh, particularly it's being 16 amps, is quite uh, relevant for the UK because uh, outlets uh, in sockets and things in the UK are generally rated to 13 amps. And that means the previous one we saw, the 10 amp version, would not really be suitable for controlling that, but the 16 amp one most definitely would be. So in the case of this one, you could attach it to a uh, socket for hair dryers or tongs or whatever. So let's see what we've got here. A little uh, bit of paper there with the uh, qualified certificate. And uh, the thing itself is uh, similar design to what we had before, but this is quite a lot more substantial, I say in terms of size there just on the one centimetre grids in the background. And uh, again, that's quite uh, larger than the one we saw previously. So uh, same sign of plastic case. All the connections are at the one end on this design where we've had them at opposite ends previously. And we've got a little hole there to mount it to a surface. Button on the top for manual operation and also no doubt to program the thing, connect it to the required app. Uh, the apps and things, by the way, you can get by scanning the codes as on here. So uh, scan away if you want to see those. Now we do have this round hole in the side, which is somewhat uh, unusual. Don't seem to have any uh, obvious function for that. So uh, let's uh, open this up. First of all, take this screw out of here and just see what's inside the terminal covers. So in this case, we've actually got uh, these sort of press type connectors as in you uh, push down the thing and then just insert the wire into the appropriate slot. So it's somewhat different to the screw terminals we saw on the previous device. And the uh, connections here are fairly uh, straightforward. So we've basically got uh, line and neutral coming in over here. Neutrals are common, so it's only switching in the line as is the other one. So that'll be the neutral in and the neutral out. Uh, it's got a connection for earth on this one, which the other model did not have. So again, that's quite useful. And then our switched line output so it would be at the end here. So fairly straightforward in that regard. So a little label there for the uh, tamper if removed type of thing. So let's just get this open and let's see what's inside. So similar as before, just a clip on cover there. So just tabs either side and then that reveals the circuit board inside fixed in with some screws. So. Also, we'll be taking those out. Now, this does have a fuse in it, which you can see uh, just there. So, again, that's uh, certainly different from the previous design. And, of course, you would expect this one to have uh, somewhat larger tracks and whatever for the higher current rating. So, the plastic case, again, looks very similar to what we had before. There's no obvious markings on it to suggest what type of plastic it's made from. Again, pretty uh, anonymous in that regard, but uh, it's probably some kind of uh, polycarbonate or something similar. Maybe I'll test that later to see if it burns or not. So here's the main board here, and we've got the uh, little switch there, which just goes through the hole in the top panel. And this one has two LEDs here. We've got these uh, plastic standoffs, so just coming up from the board with the LED on the top, rather than just a piece of plastic, so it's just extremely long leads there. This is the main relay, which will do the switching. Got a little fuse here, which is at least a ceramic type, and a few other little bits and pieces for the power supply. And of course, on the back is where the actual uh, electronics are located. So uh, first of all, then, we do have uh, isolation slots cut in uh, appropriate places here. So a bit of effort's gone in there. And as we saw on the other one, we've got the extra solder. It's been placed onto the tracks here, presumably to increase the current capacity although the tracks themselves are already fairly wide, but bearing in mind this is supposed to be rated to 16 amps. This will be the antenna here for the wireless reception, of course. Now let's uh, see what we can see on the relay here. Got this little label, but we can uh, probably just uh, remove that to see what's hiding underneath. 
So here's a look at the board in more detail. And this is the relay here, and we can see that it is actually rated to 16 amps at 250 volts, so that's good, that's what you would expect to find. And it seems to be a 5 volt uh, coil on that one, made by HKE, whoever they might be. So uh, that's certainly a reasonable start. And if we have a look at the uh, other side here, we've got the fuse here, which uh, is a ceramic variety. Uh, let's just uh, pop that out and have a look at the rating of that. So here's the fuse here, maybe a bit difficult to see there, but it's got uh, T20A, so it's a 20 amp fuse, and uh, rated at 250 volts as well. Now, so it is a ceramic variety, so much better than those awful glass ones, which, uh, although it can be had in ratings that high, the problem with those is with any kind of voltage or current on those, they explode when the fault occurs, whereas the ceramic ones, of course, are not supposed to. So we'll uh, just put that back in the place it belongs to. And we can see they've actually put the isolation slots uh, through underneath there, so that's underneath the fuse, which is exactly what you want, so that if there is a uh, fault here, the fuse will break the circuit, and then you don't have the uh, possibility of it uh, arcing or tracking across between the two points to the left. So again, they've put the uh, two slots there. I seem to have another one uh, going up in the middle, which is uh, a slightly odd arrangement, but uh, at least they've put the slots in, and there, again, decent amount of spacing involved there as well. And again, the resistor going across the two, which uh, again goes over the slots as well. Capacitors here, I don't expect those to be any uh, fantastic name, but uh, they are at least rated to 105 degrees, so again, that's uh, slightly better than the uh, 85 versions. JW Co, apparently, it says on there. Uh, rated 400 volts, uh, again, that's uh, pretty much what we want with the uh, main voltage stuff, because uh, although the voltage is 240, the uh, peak voltage is actually near to 340, so you certainly want anything to be rated well above that, so 400 in this case, that's fine. So if we have a look on the back here, we've got the terminals here, and they're just those press-in things we saw on the other side. So this is the line input here, and you see that just comes across here via that fuse, which we saw previously. And then on this side, we've got the one side of the relay, and then this is the other side of the relay. So basically those connect together, and then that goes over to the switched line output. Uh, this is the neutral connection. They're actually just common together, and it's just placey there. So you have a neutral coming over for the power supply section over there. And it's basically just one would go in from the supply, and the other goes out to the load, whatever you're using. And then these two here are actually the earth connection. This doesn't actually connect anywhere inside, it's just purely there to loop through with the earth connection. And that's something the 10 amp version did not have, and that didn't have the fuse either. And uh, what we've got here appears to be a uh, resistor, and that appears to be for your sensing the output current, as you've got basically one side here, one side here, it'll be a very low value, and then you've got the two wires coming off, going over to the electronic side. So presumably sensing the uh, voltage uh, drop across that, which is going to be absolutely tiny. Of course that can then work out what the current is. So interesting, it has uh, current sensing built in. Again, the other one did not uh, have any of that. And then uh, they put the isolation slots here under the fuse. There's a resistor which comes across from this side to back over here. And that goes via this thing here, which is a uh, bridge rectifier. Just about to see the minus and plus there. So it's basically AC in there and then the rectified AC coming out of that side. And then on the top here, just got those two larger capacitors. You've got a, a little, presumably a transistor there, and the transformer, so it's just basically a basic uh, switching type supply via the uh, transformer here, so your mains voltage is on this side. And then of course on this side will be the output at uh, five volts or whatever to power the electronics. And they have put the uh, interference suppression capacitor there, one side of the transformer to the other. And we've got this, uh, looks like a metal oxide varistor, again across the line in neutral. Again, that should uh, deal with any uh, over voltage surges there. So certainly a reasonable amount of thought's gone into the design. And uh, just single capacitor there on the output just for smoothing. And again, that would just then power the uh, electronics over on this side. And so there is a decent amount of separation here, I and mean, you've got the slot going all the way over to there. There's a good clearance here between the 
live pins here and of course the uh, other side there so that's good as well and again you've got the slots which actually go all the way through and actually between the terminal pins as well so again good uh, separation between those as well and that's brought all the way across including underneath that uh, resistor as you can see in there so this certainly should be capable of the 16 amps claimed and if you look at the sides of the tracks here, we've got on the top here a wide track there, and that's also uh, duplicated on the bottom as well, so both sides and with the extra solder applied there. Also the extra solder applied here on this side of the fuse and on this side. And again, we've got the copper on the top here as well, see those little uh, beers going through to the bottom. So uh, really put a decent amount of copper there and the extra solder as well. And the relay certainly is rated to uh, 16 amps at 250 volts. It's also got that 10 amp rating as well, which is uh, presumably for uh, inductive load or something. But certainly uh, 16 amps, it's uh, no problem with that one. So I've uh, just put it back in the case here so we can actually power it up later. And uh, in terms of its construction, I mean, it seems to be decently well made. You've got the uh, slots cut into the board under the uh, fuses here in between the two halves of that. Relay is rated to 16 amps little uh, MOV there to uh, hopefully absorb any surges that come in and it does have the interference suppression and capacitor between the two sides there and it is apparently the proper rating according to the markings on the side and 400 volt capacitors on the main side 60 on the uh, 5 volt side so again that's fine as well and the only anomaly really is this hole in the side of the case here which doesn't appear to have any function it's not a defect because it is actually a moulded in intended thing but uh, when it's on there you see it doesn't actually line up with anything it's just this empty space on the board here so uh, quite what the purpose of that is is unknown there's nothing in there you would actually sort of poke or press in terms of safety it's not a huge issue because this is the 5 volt side so there's no sort of mains parts inside here obviously it'd be better if it wasn't there but quite what its reason is is uh, something we obviously can't identify from this particular example and I say it's basically in line with the uh, little capacitor there. So a uh, bit of a mystery with that one. It's got a mounting slot here, and presumably this one here is for the uh, other mounting screw to go in. That's actually where the uh, line and neutral are, so it's sort of directly below the line and neutral cables for the input there. It may have been better if it was over here where the uh, earth ones connect, but uh, it's not really an issue because there's actually quite a distance between where the wires go in. These are quite deep terminals, so no real chance of any live wires or things just straying onto the screw you've got. So again, there's quite a depth there, and you've got the board sticking out of it as well. Cable clamp it does actually have, so it's just these serrated bits here. It is uh, flat, so it would suggest a flat type of uh, flex or cable would be more appropriate with this rather than a round one. But again, that just screws in there. No problem whatsoever. And it's uh, reasonably well fixed together. I mean, it is only a clip together case, but it requires a decent amount of effort to get in there. You can't really get in there with your fingers, so a screwdriver is almost certainly required. So we'll uh, power this up next time. I'm not going to power it up on this bench because there's only a 13 amp uh, power supply available here. And of course, this is rated to 16. And this 13 amps also includes the lighting and also the lighting on the ceiling as well. So uh, no chance of getting 16 out of this without blowing a fuse or something. So we'll do this at the other bench next time, which has a 32 amp power supply available, and see what happens then. And that's it for this time. So until next time, thanks for watching.